Oh my, that's called a spine tickling. Spine tickling. No, that's called a rim check. Welcome to Rimcheck. I'm Reed Horner. And I'm Ian Dolan. The other night in Los Angeles, another heavyset, loud, rich person exposed themselves to a crowd full of people. And no, it wasn't Harvey Weinstein. It was plus-size pop star Lizzo. LA hasn't been this shook since that earthquake last week. Or the wildfires. Or the drought. <sighs> Jesus, that place is a hellhole. Anyway, check out what Lizzo did. The Lakers won that night, but thanks to Lizzo, the whole crowd went home feeling like losers. Apparently, the whole stunt was to get the attention of her NBA crush, Carl Anthony Towns. Let me tell you something, both teams are great. I'm personally cheering for number 32. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns? Mm-hmm. That's your guy? That's my baby. OK. You know him? Nope. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> New man on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, she would break him apart like a Kit Kat. Unfortunately for Lizzo, the only giant attention seeker cat fucks with is Joel Embiid. And even then, he only lasted a minute. Reed, what would you do if Lizzo was hitting on you? What? Nothing, ew, gross. You didn't even answer the question. The NBA's new city jerseys have been catching the eyes of fans across the country. Though I think a few of them are weirdly sexual, like Milwaukee's Cream City jerseys. And Sacramento's sack town. Come on, man, grow up. You were thinking about Lizzo, and now you're all hot and bothered. Honestly, I love the creativity of these jerseys. I think every city should do the same thing. Like, what about Dallas, the big D? Okay, or, or Boston, teabaggers? Teabaggers? Yeah, like, you know, the Boston Tea Party. Uh-huh. Okay, how about this one? LA's city of anals. Okay, that one's not even subtle. You're not subtle! I'm sorry. Trade season is here, and one star whose name always seems to be in the rumor mill is Kevin Love, who reportedly wants out of Cleveland. Yeah, him and every other person in Cleveland, I don't think he realizes nobody chooses to live there. It's just the place you end up. The problem is the Cavs gave him a ridiculously big contract, making him almost impossible to be traded. Well, although he has been linked to his hometown trailblazers, who need to make a change after their abysmal start to the season. Yeah, just what Portland needs. Another bearded white dude with anxiety issues. In other Caucasian news, Gordon Hayward's back from injury. Again. The Bucks have been the best team in the East this season at a scorching 24-3 start. Giannis has been amazing and seems to love playing for Milwaukee. Can you imagine what Giannis must have felt like getting off the plane in Milwaukee's the first American <laughs> city he sees? Yeah, that would be like dropping off a Trump supporter at a quinceanera. Reed, isn't your girlfriend's kids in here like next month? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm really nervous to meet her parents. Why? We went to high school together. Kawhi Leonard was awarded his championship ring when he made his return to Toronto this week, and for some reason he had a middle finger inscribed on the inside of his ring. Canadians didn't understand the gesture, but they issued an apology just in case. Well, I heard Kawhi thought the middle finger just represented the number of years he played there. That's why he has a shocker inscribed on his Spurs ring. And speaking of putting it in the wrong hole, Kevin Knox dunked on his own basket against the Kings the other night, and he learned something the rest of the NBA already knew. The Knicks are hilariously easy to score on. Yeah, he must have had Coach Fisdale pulling his hair out with that. Dude, he doesn't have hair. Yeah, I know. He's also not their coach. Yes, you heard it right. In a shocking turn of events, the Knicks fired their head coach for not winning enough games. But what did the Knicks brass expect him to do with that roster? That's like buying underwear from Goodwill and being surprised when it smells bad. For real, I mean, who is even leading the score on the team? Marcus Morris. Exactly. And after one and a half seasons and a 21 and 83 record, the longest tenured coach in Knicks history says he's excited to spend more time with his family. And everyone says that when they get fired, but I honestly believe him. Why? Dude, have you seen his wife? No matter his coaching record, this man is a winner. Eh, not, not my type. Honestly, the funniest part of the whole situation is the list of potential replacements. <laughs> a recent report indicated Mark Jackson, Jeff Van Gundy, and Rimcheck favorite Tom Thibodeau are being considered as head coaching candidates. Yo, that's like the most Knicks thing ever. Of course they only want to overpay a big name who's past their prime. For real, man. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried bringing in Phil Jackson. Staying on the topic of basketball, Carmelo Anthony was POW last week, and I know what you're thinking, no, he's not a prisoner of war. He's not on the Knicks anymore. It means he's been named Player of 
the week, like all of us well-educated, knowledgeable, and surprisingly well-endowed NBA fans believed. Come on, sweetie. We both know he did not deserve to win that award. Harden scored more in one game than Melo scored the entire week. Melo succeeding is kind of like when a Make-A-Wish kid gets their wish granted. Actually, 2K just granted a kid his wish to come to the 2K headquarters and meet with the creators of his favorite game. Unfortunately, they were all busy, so he had to settle for a day with Ronnie 2K. Yeah, it's actually hilarious that people think he has anything to do with making the game. He's the head of marketing, and isn't it like a little bit racist to assume the Indian guy is the back-end game developer? I thought he was head of customer service. Yikes. Uh, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This episode of Rim Check is sponsored by the viral hit YouTube comedy basketball program show, Rim Check. The show features two handsome and bright young men who bring laughter and joy to tens of people roughly every other week. Man, how, how do you actually get sponsors? Um, I think you just have to be funny and then popular. Oh, damn. Thanks, Rim Check. Hello, young bloods. As you know, I am Professor Kyrie Irving, and this, this, is Philosophy 101. What does government mean to you? <laughs> no. It happens all the time, and tonight just shows how sports and entertainment will always be ignorant and obtrusive. One big show that means very, very little in the real world. This game isn't meant to be controlled and shown as a Drama, the love for the arts, is the only damn thing that keeps the purest people. Don't fall for the game that's played in front of you as entertainment. It will never be as serious as dealing with, well, as dealing with life. Boo, you suck. I have a confession to make. I've been thinking about this for some time and I'm a I Heat love you fan. Too. No. Fans have been messaging me about being a Knicks homer, and I need to set the record straight. Nobody's messaging you. I grew up in Miami during the LeBron era. Oh, so now that they're getting good again, you just want to jump on that bandwagon. No, no, look, I can prove it. Here's a picture of me at American Airlines Arena back in 09. <laughs> Dude, you look exactly like Dustin from Stranger Things. Did you also talk with a lisp and play D&D? Bro, the only D&D &D I got was from my uncle. Wow, that, that, that's horrifying. What? I, I mean, Dunkin' Donuts. He used to bring me munchkins when he visited. What did you think? Ne never mind. Nothing. Lastly, with the holidays right around the corner, we hacked into the iCloud accounts of a few NBA players, and after sifting through thousands of dick pics, we came across their letters to Santa. We discovered LeBron asked Santa for a 2017 championship ring. All James Harden wants is a big booty hoe. Tyler Hero desperately needs a fake ID. And I'm not sure how this one would work on an NBA court, but Westbrook wants his own ball for Christmas. And of course, Dwight Howard asked Santa for Kelly Oubre. Well, that's it for this episode of Rim Check. Merry Christmas, everybody. We say happy holidays here. I want more juice, you bigot. <laughs> we just zip this up. Mm, roger, roger. No, it wasn't Harvey Lott. Fuck. Yeah, just tell the side chick to calm down a little bit, you know? Don't worry, I'll let your mom know not to call me. Thanks. What would you do if Lizzo was hitting on you? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do? Why you... I should be like, Reed, Reed, where are you? This episode of oh. Rim Check. <laughs> you? You went, what would you do? Like, I thought you That's were gonna say, what would you do? What? I'm not gonna say, what would you, I'm not gonna say, what would you do? Boo, you suck. <laughs> We're getting sexual, like Milwaukee's crazy. <laughs> I'm not letting go of this steak. You like that one? No. Can we do the other one? No. Okay. And Sacramento <laughs> sucked down. At least it was a good episode. Cause... A little blue tint. Blue face, baby. You trying to break up with me? I've heard that too many times. Hi! Read. What would you do if Lizzo was hitting on you? Oh shit, like doing the, the bloops. Yeah. The bloops. And even then, you only laughed at them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude, was that unzipped the whole time? 
was a part. This is hell. There was a part where we. That was good, actually. Surprisingly. 